Oh. Yeah. Jeff's on. Tim's on. <coughs> Good afternoon, and uh, welcome to the October 7th, 2010 uh, meeting of the Board of Adjustment. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please silence any uh, cell phones or other noisemakers. And uh, uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, first item up is approval of the minutes of the September 16th meeting. I think you don't have enough members for approval that attend that meeting. Short. Okay. Short. Yeah. So Rod. Maybe we could put it to the end. Okay, we'll put yeah. it to the heel of the docket, and maybe Rod will be here to approve that. Next item up is continuance requests or withdrawals. We have one uh, request today, item number one, case number 13297. Uh, 13297 is asking to be withdrawn. Okay. Uh, I don't, do we need a motion on that? I don't think so. No. We, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Is anyone here to speak on that item? Okay. Uh, next uh, up is uh, nothing on the consent docket, so items requiring a separate vote. Item number two, case number 13319, request of surplus acquisi acquisition venture for a variance to the hard surface paving, number of parking spaces, and the landscaping requirements located at 7501 Southwest 29th Street. And if you'll come to the center podium, actually, and uh, give us your name and address, and uh, yeah, thank you so much. Sorry, I'm new to this, okay. a little bit nervous here, out of towner. So <laughs> my name is Tim Hill. I'm representing Surplus Acquisition Venture, uh, DBA Government Liquidation, and uh, appreciate the, the board's attention for, for this and the opportunity. Um, just to give you a little bit of background quickly, I know you uh, have time to, to do other things, but... We're a service contract with the Department of Defense. Uh, we sell items uh, throughout the United States. We've been doing so for some time now, and we try to alleviate and cooperative with the, the DOD to try and to get their, their inventory uh, moving along and through, and also try to help the, uh, the, the Treasury with the, uh, the reimbursement of funds, if you will. So we try to maximize the tax dollar as much as possible. But, we, we, all of our auctions ex are on, online exclusively. This, that's where the sale occurs. Um, typically, we deal with textiles. Um, give you an idea, if, if you're able to see this, uh, on, this uh, service contract is, again, nationwide. Almost every military installation uh, where it's manned or unmanned site, we have a presence there. Um, this is, you can see kind of an idea of what we have, but, uh, and as was uh, illustrated and, and uh, spoke to in the documents, aircraft parts, audiovisual equipment, medical dental equipment, all those type of things are, are sold. This is an example of one of the warehouses that's in conjunction or uh, immediately on the property that we're in question. It's on the uh, south, or on the, I believe it's the southwest corner. Um, not very good with my directions here, but uh, Here's a, an idea of where the storage facility is. Again, uh, the, on one side is where we have our, our, our office buildings and all the, uh, all the arrangements in terms of the landscaping, the rocks, the decorative rocks, um, all the other things that are up to code on that side. Uh, the storage facility, which you, you'll, you'll notice at the top, is a, a fenced-in area. It has a barbed wire on the top. It's not a typical... Um, dealership that you would basically see. Right now it's hard rolled gravel and that's that's how it is currently stand. This is the proposed vehicles that that we anticipate that the government will send to us, these military vehicles. Um, you'll notice that they're they're in the same type of a environment in terms of the, the gravel and whatnot. Um, again some of the considerations uh, you know if we were in a, a bona fide dealership in the in all true senses of the word we'd be on the corner and we'd be advertising. And, uh, and we're not, we're hidden away. It's done all, all on the internet. These are already sold to the buyer. Um, when the vehicles are retrieved, it's, the customers are uh, escorted to an in, initial site of the building. And, and of course that uh, is, uh, is where 
uh, we escort them carefully over to the barbed wire fence and the, the eight foot uh, that fence that we spoke of. Um, you know, on that that particular side, there's there's sufficient parking. You'll notice that I can provide additional photos, but there's marked uh, parking, the handicap parking, the ramps, the lighting, proper signage, and everything else. If you go into the office itself, there's a, a male and female re uh, uh, restroom. Um, this would in, uh, we would incur, of course, a, a significant hardship if if we were to pay that, um, considering the fact that we also have a contract that's due to uh, expire in a couple of years. And considering the flow of inventory projected, we don't, we don't know exactly what the government will do, but at any time they can have an inventory shift, and so, so we try to alleviate that. Um, and uh, as such, you know, in, over the past five, six months, I've had a, a request for about three vehicles, um, which probably wouldn't constitute, you know. Um, anyway, we'd, we'd like to have some sort of a, a, an allowance on this. Um, to help uh, alleviate that that situation, um, we're oversight. Our oversight is the GAO and all other government entities. That so we we're we are a good contractor and we want to keep it that way. Um, so I don't know if there is any other questions or concerns, but questions or comments. Could we consider a variance with the time limits since their contracts due to expire? Hmm. I think so. And limited to, possibly limited to this use only? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Make a motion to that effect, that it expires. Do you expire the 1st of 2012 or at the end of 2012? Do you know? I think, I believe it's June of 2012, but, you know, we're, we're going to petition for a renewal of the contract, but it's a bidding as a most government contract, so we don't know that, you know, what's going to happen. But to give you an example, I might have to alleviate We'll have to go somewhere else because it, it just won't. We don't have enough vehicles that would be rolling through there in order to to uh, pave it. I, I believe the estimates that we've uh, run through is 800,000 to 900,000 for maybe a handful, maybe 30 vehicles that run through there a year that are just stationed there. They're they're plopped there on the property. They can't be moved. They're not. People can't walk around and barter. They can't do any of that. If, if we uh, put a two or three year time limit, you can come back and request additional time if you have a new contract. So. Okay. I'll go ahead and make the motion for the uh, the variance to extend to the end of 2012. Second. And limit, do you want to limit it to, uh, to this use only? And limit it to this use only. Now, in terms of, I don't know if this is a point of discussion or not, we, we, we have military trailers, trailers there currently. Uh, this was in, in, in an effort to help with the motor vehicle uh, dealer's license that we're required to, by the state to acquire. Um, so it would be those, those uh, pup trailers there, trailers there, and, and then motor vehicles p potentially as we secure the, the, the dealer. Oh, that would fall within the scope of what you yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. Just approach. basically, that, if, if, if the business went out, the variance wouldn't continue with, the, with someone else so they could use it like that. Is this for this application, this variance, this use? And for a time frame ending in 2012, if you need additional time at that point, you can come back before the board. All right, wonderful. Thank you that, very much. That, well, we haven't voted yet, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you can anyway. Yeah, yeah the wood jet. But there's a motion and a second. Is that correct? All right, record your votes. <laughs> You're approved. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Item number three, case number 13320, request of Westtown Resource Center for a variance to the hard surface paving requirement and to allow parking and maneuvering in the street right away located at 1729 Northwest 3rd. Applicant, come on up, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Dan Strawn. I'm the director of the Homeless Alliance, and uh, we're requesting this for the Westtown Resource Center, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Homeless Alliance. We have a, a city block located between Northwest 3rd and uh, Northwest 4th and between Virginia and Kentucky. And we're asking uh, the, the board's indulgence to do a semi-permeable pad for um, a semi and then and semi-permeable for parking on the north side of the property. The parking on the north side of the property will is for overflow. Um, the, this structure on the south is a, is a day shelter. 
serving the homeless and the structure on the north is a is a resource center it's it's a one stop shop with forty offices for uh, providers for of homeless services and uh, we need this this parking um, for overflow when we do ev events on the property uh, and we've chosen to go with the uh, semi permeable surface because we're um, attempting to get lead certification for both both structures and while we don't uh, get lead points for doing parking surfaces this way it is the most environmentally sound uh, way to develop the property what do you propose put down it's it's a uh, crushed stone uh, product that and, and I've brought the brought drawings and information about it it's not just rolled gravel it's a it's a it's a it's a really difficult system go ahead Kenny uh, my name is Kenneth Dennis and I'm an architect Kenny would you uh, would you actually speak into the mic just to record your uh, testimony please yes Thanks. my name is Kenneth Dennis I'm the project architect with TAP architecture here in Oklahoma City on this project uh, the product that we propose using uh, in both locations on the north parking area, which will um, provide 18 parking spaces for the overflow parking, as well as this location down here is called Gravel Pave 2, and it's a system that utilizes a um, it's a decomposed granite And if you gravel. have something we want to pass out, that would be There's great. a couple yeah. detail sheets and then a product literature uh, that Dan has available. But basically, it's a permeable paving system. It consists of a, uh, basically a hard plastic uh, uh, subsurface that goes down on top of the compacted subgrade. And that surface is, uh, the strength of that surface will support vehicles uh, for parking, driving on, turning. And in that uh, hard plastic uh, system, the, decompo the decomposed granite chips are overlaid on top of that, so it gives it a, a an appearance like it's a gravel parking lot. However, it has that additional support underneath so that you don't get, uh, you know, wheel ruts in the gravel surface for the parking. And that'll actually support the weight of the uh, mobile... Um, of the mobile yeah. clinic? Right. Yes. It also is ADA uh, approved for use. You can roll wheelchairs across it. However, in both locations, uh, no. We don't uh, foresee any wheelchair use. There's no handicapped parking on the north side of the property where the 18 overflow spaces are. And then the mobile clinic itself, for anybody who would need assistance in getting up to the clinic, there's going to be uh, ramps and stuff that would get them up to that level to enter the clinic. I'm familiar with this system. This is an excellent system to use. And yeah, we know you're... Yeah. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't even, we didn't even uh, propose to use gravel pave. This is a more expensive system use slate than, or something. Than, what we've, uh, than what we've approved for Humphreys and our own parking yeah, lot. Right, this, is a, yeah, right. this is an excellent system. So uh, There is very little traffic on 3rd and 4th Street, um, the, as the, stated in the... Uh, I was going to address the other piece about the, uh, uh, the maneuvering in the right-of-way. Sure. Uh, that would uh, be particularly relevant to the mobile clinic uh, backing up off of uh, 3rd Street onto the property. Uh, the facility prior to Homeless Alliance taking the, the space and, and renovating the structures was a, a, a manufacturing, uh, uh, millwork manufacturing, and it has overhead doors and warehouse capabilities, so there were trucks delivering items and maneuvering off of 3rd Street already in that neighborhood. And also the clinic itself is going to be parked on site most of the time. Occasionally uh, it will leave over overnight or over a weekend to go serve some of the rural communities here in central Oklahoma. Any additional questions or comments um, by board hmm. members? Move to approve. Second. In a motion and a second to approve the application. Please record your vote. You are approved. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's cool. Stuff. <laughs> All right. Huh? Oh yeah. Let's uh, let's go back uh, to the uh, item number. Uh, well. Uh, 
Point number two, approval of the minutes since Mr. Baker has arrived and uh, I'll try to approve the minutes. There are motions. Move approval. Motion. Second. Motion is second to approve the minutes. Please record your vote. Right. Minutes are approved. Thanks. All right. All right. Mm. Back to uh, item number four. Item number four, case number 13321, request of Oklahoma City Public Schools for a variance to permit the reduction in the number of required parking spaces and the use of metal siding on six temporary classroom buildings located at 6900 South Byers Avenue. I'm Larry Smallwood, representing Oklahoma City Public Schools, uh, residents at 4641 Woodland Boulevard. We are requesting a variance to move on 624 by 36 metal classroom buildings at Hayes Elementary School due to the fact that we are tearing down the barracks buildings to add on addition with the MAPS kids program. Also to waive the parking requirements and um, the parking will be also addressed uh, with the MAPS program. The um, Completion date on these, on the renovations will be June of 2012. At that time, all of the metal, metal portable buildings will be moved off the site. Move approval. We've typically done that for two, two or three year time well, period, do we? Just okay. whatever the. Okay, whatever he's requesting. Yeah. Second. Second. Motion is second. Please, rec off. please record your votes. You're approved. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Item number five, case number 13322, request of Orion Lawns for a variance to the screening requirement and to permit gravel parking located at 300 Northwest 104th Street. Good afternoon. I'm Bill Collins, an attorney for Orion Lawns. I have with me Martin Kiever, who's the owner. Uh, we're seeking a variance. Uh, from the requirements of having to uh, hard surface or concrete surface the approach, the driveway, and the parking area uh, for this lot, and also seeking variances from requirement for site proof screening. Uh, this property is in a burgeoning, I'll say, industrial area uh, south of Hefner, west of a Broadway extension. Directly across the street is a business uh, similar but larger in scope than my clients, and my client is a, a lawn business. He does off-site work, nothing on-site except for storage of, of his vehicles inside his structure. Uh, it's on 104th Street. At this location, 104th Street is actually one of the few streets in place. But it is like all the others that are in place. It's graveled. Uh, Harvey runs directly to the east of this property. It's not in place. The, the only other activity on this street is the other uh, landscape business, and it's directly north across 104th Street. So there's limited activity. Uh, we'd be willing to do the required paving if and when 104th Street is built to city standards. Uh, as far as the screening is concerned, uh, property to the east and west is still zoned single family, uh, and uh, undoubtedly it's not going to remain that way or ever be developed residentially. But we would agree to install the screening should they become residentially developed. But that's not going to happen. I can promise you that from, from having visited the area. <laughs> I know we've granted a couple of variances in this uh, area before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the, the property cro directly across the street was granted the exact same variances that we're re requesting. I'll make a motion then that uh, we grant oh. the variance. Oh, excuse excuse oh, me, just a minute. Um, I have property listed right in this area. I don't have any financial interest in it, but I have property listed in the area. And I don't see it. I mean, I don't see it as a conflict, but uh, I do. If anybody, do you? See it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, leave, I'll leave the room. If you want me to leave the room? No. Yeah. I mean, I, 
I, I would just say I have it listed, but I don't have any financial interest in it or anything. If the uh, applicant doesn't have an objection to your continued participation. Do you have any objection to me voting that? He wants rather to, I didn't. <laughs> he wants to I know how you're going to vote. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think the, okay. I don't believe there's a comment. All right. Move approval. <laughs> the, the, the motion oh, would be to <laughs> the motion would be to extend the variance with the condition that should the area ever be uh, developed residentially, the applicant agrees to pave and screen as required. That's fine. Second. Motion is second to approve the application uh, as stated by uh, uh, by Jeff. All those in favor? Thank Thank you. Thank you. Item number six, case number 13323, request of Tammy Phelan for a variance to the building setback, Bill 2 line located at 2801 North Classen Boulevard. I'm Rebecca Eggleston. I'm a business partner in this venture here to represent Tamara at this time. And then that's Brad. And I'm Brad Peak, and I own some car wash. I'm helping put the project together. We're just here to see to get the variance granted, as you can see in the proposal, in, uh, instead of 10 feet back, 35 feet back to allow pedestrian right away and to promote flow of traffic. And 80 percent of the projects actually is in compliance. Did I see that? I'm sorry. Is 80 percent of the of the project in compliance? Did I see uh, that or not? Well, I, if I understand it, 80 percent of the building had to be within 10 feet. Yeah. Uh, no? No, that wouldn't be the Okay. Case. I'm sorry. Misread that. Move to approve. Second. Oh, hold on. Hold. I'm sorry. One second. I, I'm, I'm a little... It's not, this case. it's not this case. Okay. I couldn't read the writing on this. Just to make sure that someone wasn't here to speak against the case. Okay. okay. All right. There's a motion and a second to approve the application. Please record your vote. You're approved. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Item number seven, case number 13324, request of Kim Ray for a variance to per <coughs> permit parking and maneuvering within the street right of way located at 35 Northwest 42nd Street. Hello, my name is Jesse Rush. Uh, the address is 35 Northwest 42nd Street. Uh, we're requesting a variance to repave and restripe existing parking to allow handicap accessibility. <coughs> <laughs> Parking exists. They're actually improving this, making it ADA compliant. I think everybody maneuvers in the right away in that area, doesn't they? Yeah, yeah exactly. Move yeah. yep. approval. Second. Motion is second to approve the application. Please record your votes. And Mr. Baker? You're approved. <laughs> He's tricky. You're approved. Thank you. Thank you. Tricky today. <laughs> Item number eight, case number 13325, request of Britt and Patty High for a variance to permit a porch encroaching into the front yard setback located at 2219 Northwest 17th Street. Good afternoon. I'm Patty High. This is my husband, Britt High. Um, we are the homeowners at 2219 Northwest 17th Street. We've been there 11 years. Uh, we have brought with us our contractor, Dustin Brine. And uh, also uh, a neighbor of ours from across the street, Jean Childers, is here in support of our application. Um, as you can see, I know there was a photograph that was attached. Um, the, our house doesn't really look like this anymore. And what we're wanting to do is to extend the side porch, which is an existing structure. We're going to redevelop or redo that. And we want to wrap that porch around the front of the house. Um, the... Uh, code says that it can only be six feet wide. Um, we're requesting a variance of four feet to allow us to build a 10-foot porch because we'd rather have a porch than a catwalk. And so um, <laughs> that's what we're requesting. Um, our property would be in line with our neighbors. We're not going to be, you know, right down at the street. Um, the existing front porch part is now gone. Um, we are just requesting your permission to do this so that we can complete the construction. How far did the old porch extend out? Do you remember? Four feet. So, so will, the, uh, will the front porch line be on the, the, the 10 foot that you're requesting and then the steps will continue to come out past that? Right. I, whenever I said that, 
planning, basically, they only care about the steps. They didn't, okay. when I was talking to them about the it out that far, they said the steps didn't really matter that much. And I, I can see, I, I drove by, and there are some structures that are past that up here. It's not quite as far as this one appears, though. The one right next door is, is right next door uh, west is it's exactly the same. I looked at your form work today, actually, and saw it was a little past. <laughs> <laughs> don't leave my house like that. <laughs> um. My across the street neighbor, Gene, who is here, Mr. Childers, he has a wraparound porch on his house, and I think he can speak to how far it extends. I believe it extends um, 11 feet in, in one area. He's got a bay area and then a, a porch wrapped around the rest of it. So. <clears throat> David, are you suggesting that the steps be recessed back to the front line of the porch? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I can see there, there, there is some uh, unique circumstances on the uh, on the block. I'm not quite sure what the hardship is. But. For, the, for code purposes, the steps aren't counted. Okay. As a, so they don't as matter. Yeah. Okay. They are asking for a 66 percent increase. Are there any protesters? Nope, no, no one signed up. And it, and, it, and it won't extend further than the neighbor to the west. What was that? It doesn't extend, it won't extend further out than the neighbor to the west? I think it's probably two inches past the neighbor. Two inches. Uh, two inches. And there are, there are three or four porches on that block uh, that, that do extend past. I did drive by and look, and it's just right. trying to make sure you're, you're kind of meeting that general setback, so. Move approval. <laughs> second. <laughs> Motion and a second to approve the application. Please record your votes. You're approved. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Item number nine, case number 13326, request of Elliott and Associates for a variance to permit a nine-foot-tall security fence located at 4425 North Santa Fe Avenue. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Brent Forge. I'm with Elliott & Associates Architects at 35 Harrison Avenue. Um, I'm here on behalf of our client, R.B. Aikens Company, who has moved in their offices to 4425 North Santa Fe. And uh, they've renovated the building and done a lot of um, improvements to the site. And as the submitted site plan shows, there's a north and a south building with the service yard in between. And uh, for security reasons, we need to put a fence across that. But we also want to try to improve the streetscape in the neighborhood. Um, the code allows an eight-foot fence, but that eight-foot fence wouldn't adequately screen um, some electrical equipment and a transformer that's only seven feet away from the front property line along Santa Fe. So what we, um, a nine-foot fence would block these views. Um, the south portion of the fence is site-proof. It's clad in the same metal panels as the existing building, so it really looks like it belongs. The north section of the fence is um, a wire mesh that you can see through to a portion of the service yard where the paving's been removed and it has a landscaping done in there, so it looks really nice. Um, the development services review didn't find any unfavorable conditions, and we think it, would, it really would help the uh, appearance of the street, which is a pretty major avenue. Move to approve. Second. <laughs> What's the That's fence a, going? What are you going to construct the fence of? It's a all metal fence. It's steel post with a, a corrugated metal face on it. It's a galvalume finish, which is silver. Oh. Tim, do you have any concern with that, or just uh, just kind of clarifying? There was a motion and a second to approve the application. Please record your votes. You're approved. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Item number 10, case number 13279, appeal of Burt and Mary Bowman of the decision of the Historic Preservation Commission regarding the denial of a certificate of appropriateness regarding the replacement of windows, the reconstruction of the front porch, and the replacement of the front door and side lights located at 524 Northwest 17th Street. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Lana Colmia here for Burt and Mary Bowman. Uh, this is my second appearance uh, before this board. The uh, last appearance uh, with regard to an addition, uh, I didn't know if you guys were interested in knowing the progress of that addition that you approved, but I can certainly speak to that if you would like. 
Uh, we are here on three different issues, and I thought for uh, the board's sake and for mine, if that's all right, if we could separate each in particular out to start with the windows themselves, would that be appropriate at this time? Sure. Okay. With regards to the June 2 hearing of the windows, I thought that we would start with the north elevation. <clears throat> On the north elevation itself, there are uh, various, and I believe that you have a, uh, a photograph of the north elevation that we presented uh, some time back. Oh, yeah. but. I'm going to be speaking first to the first floor issue, which are the six windows that are on the front porch of this building. Uh, these have been uh, replaced. However, we are asking that we may replace these in like kind and quality. It is uh, my understanding after speaking with Catherine that the appearance as it is today is not satisfactory to her. We are willing to make it satisfactory and uh, make it look like the uh, originals from the photographs that we had had before. With regards to the second story windows, we have, I have numbered them the top, the very top of each of these double pane, these double windows, uh, one through six, and the bottom half is seven through 12. With regards to the top half of each of these windows, we are asking to repair these windows. They are original, and we are asking to repair those. With regards to the lower portion of each one of these, 7 through 12, we are asking that those be replaced in kind, like kind and quality, so that the appearance has not been changed in any way, shape, or form to uh, preserve that appearance. That is what we're asking for on the north elevation itself. With regards to the east elevation, going from north to south, I have numbered uh, anything in the back is the new structure itself, so I'm really not going to be addressing those. But on the east elevation, first floor one through uh, five. Ms. Columbia, uh, yes. uh, uh, just real quickly. Um, this is an appeal of the HP um, it is. Uh, decision and uh, not a new presentation on new information? No, I understand it's not a, it, I understand that. I, I believe, though, that uh, uh, since we have come to, we've come into an agreement on the front door and the side lights uh, to replace in like kind and quality, so uh, um, Catherine said that a certificate of appropriateness would not be necessarily for that. We are appealing the decision of the uh, board, the uh, Historic Preservation Commission, due to the fact that the uh, staff itself on these windows had approved each ones of these, with the exception of the first floor north elevation that I just went over with you, and the north uh, on the west elevation. Uh, the northwest corner, which I will have denoted as number one. And that is a recommendation, not a. And I understand. I understand that. I am. I'm not. I am not in <laughs> any way saying that that's nothing but a recommendation. Uh, since that hearing, we have the uh, northwest corner on the west elevation has been uh, replaced with original. It's the original window, and then the front one is the one that we just talked about, one through six. Uh, that we are willing to make it look like kind and quality. This is this is something new that you're presenting, though, uh, is it not? I mean, you're you're saying you're going to do this. This is different than what you told the HP Commission at that meeting. Well, and, and we're here to hear. We're, we can only hear the appeal of the three items that are before us, not new information and a new idea. Understood. And it sounds to me like you're presenting a new idea. All right. I I don't. I do apologize to this group if 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 I am uh, inappropriate in my statement with you. With regards to the windows themselves, however, uh, all windows, the staff had recommended approval on all of the windows with the exception of that north elevation, the first floor, and the northwest corner of the west elevation. 
and it is that which we are requesting that this court approve. You can't request approval of a Rita. Do you I mean, I, I, if you're saying this board is empowered to affirm, modify, or deny an appeal, exactly, and it's just the information that was presented to the lower commission, so. The idea that you have now worked with staff wouldn't be appropriate before this board because all they're doing is deciding whether or not the HP Commission acted appropriately in its decision. So if there's new information, it would have to be re-reviewed by the commission that denied the certificate of appropriateness, and this body could only determine whether or not they acted properly. Okay. The uh, Board of Adjustment, there, the issues on the windows were separated. In other words, they were separated with the ones that, that we are asking this court to overturn their denial of that, th this panel to overturn them. Uh, that had been approved by the staff. With regards to the north elevation and the northwest, which was, a, was, was separately stated in the uh, report itself, uh, I understand where you don't want any, any additional information with regards to those. And I've presented no new information that I understand with regards to the in windows that I've just described with the west and east elevations and the north and the second floor of the north uh, elevation itself. There's nothing new. We believe that, uh, that the staff, when it made the recommendation, was appropriate based upon the guidelines of like, kind, and quality, or repair original and therefore that there was no reason to deny the request for those windows on the east elevation, west elevation, and the second floor of the north elevation with, on the west elevation, the exception of that northwest window. Therefore, uh, since it was, uh, uh, the guidelines had the, uh, could have supported a decision by the board to, uh, approve it, we are asking this court, this panel to do exactly that with regards to those windows. Do I have, have I made myself clear as far no. as everything, they had separated them again. So are you saying that because the staff recommended approval? I am not. I believe that we, that we fit the guidelines with regards to these windows and we believe that there was uh, nothing in the, uh, there was nothing inappropriate with regards to those windows as to the reason for that denial. Certainly, I'm accepting out that, that bottom floor north elevation and the northwest corner, but as far as everything else, there was no reason uh, to, to deny when we were within the guidelines themselves of like kind quality or repair of the originals. Well, let's, uh Let's hear from Catherine Montgomery on the windows. Maybe they were administratively approved since the HP Commission meeting. Figure it out. There haven't been any additional <laughs> approvals of any additional work since the HP Commission meeting. There have been conversations between staff and um, the applicant's uh, representative. Um, and I think that there's a little bit of confusion. Um, the applicant has um, agreed to do some things that they hadn't originally desired to do. For example, refurbishing the, win the original windows that still remain on the property. They don't anticipate replacing any additional windows. So that's the change. I, th I think what they're appealing is at this point then would be the windows that have already been changed and um, that they do not desire to change again. So obviously um, they know, the applicant knows that they need to make a new application to the HP Commission for the work that um, would remain to be done that is different from what they had heard before. Mm -hmm. For example, the replacement of the front windows with a more appropriate replacement would require a new application. So the appeal is of the work that had already been done on the windows that the commission did not approve. 
That is correct. Okay. So they will want to know on those windows, and it would be helpful if you would label them on here. Um, they would want to know why that decision should not stand that was made by the HP Commission. I believe that the HP Commission didn't follow its own guidelines when it denied the replacement and like kind and quality of those windows. There were some that had been uh, stated that they would remain and just be repaired, but the others of like kind and quality, that was what was denied. We cannot come up now with the new, with the original windows in those. There's, uh, there's nothing that Bert and Mary Bowman can do about that. All they can do is replace it like kind and quality. Uh, as a result, we believe that that fits the guidelines themselves and that the board, for whatever reason, uh, failed to uh, abide by those, maybe because they are angry with the homeowners, maybe because of the other issues that were involved. But when it came specifically to those windows, uh, there was nothing that could have been done other than replaced with like, kind, and quality, which is why we're asking this court to overturn their decision and allow us uh, to keep the, the windows of like, kind, and quality. And certainly, if I'm repairing, I understand I don't need a certificate of appropriateness for that as well. And, and you're asking, actually, to keep the windows that are already in place that were not that were not approved, original. That are not original and were not approved and do not meet the current guidelines because they're insulated glass. That's correct. Again, there's nothing, there was nothing, oh, I'm there sorry, did are. you say what, sir? At the, the last comment that you made, I the, believe uh, I didn't hear. They do, they do have a double pane glass. glass. They wouldn't, they, the windows that are in there currently that you're asking to keep. Yes, we are. You have a, a double pane insulated glass which are, are not allowed in the current guidelines. Well, but under the, uh, those that were, Recommended. Because that they are because the originals are no longer at it, it, the staff approval of the double pane hung windows, wood hung windows uh, would be appropriate under the guidelines. Therefore, that is why we are asking this board to overturn that decision. You're asking to yeah. keep windows that were illegally installed I believe and and how do, but how do I come up with original windows when my again my clients purchased this property a year and a half ago I have I have no way or they have no way of replacing an original window when there is none for us to replace the like kind and quality issue is all that I believe we have left that we can deal with at this point in time we do have a, a protester signed up uh, mr. Adele would you like to Comment at this time. Today. Oh, Brian, Brian Dale, correct? Yes. Did you care to? Uh, okay. Did you? You did want to speak? Yes, please. Come on up. My name is Brian Dell. I live at 528 Northwest 17th Street, which is the property immediately west of this particular house. <clears throat> now and review before the board. If I understood the last discussion correctly, I think that the issues have to do with the fact that the, the Historical Preservation Commission had uh, denied replacing the windows, re reconstructing the front porch, and replacing the front door and side lights. If I understood what this uh, staff report says, among other things, and the reason that the appeal is here today before the Historical Preservation Commission, is that correct? So I think that that's that's what it says. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah, and there wasn't a lot of discussion that I heard, for example, about the front porch. I did hear the discussion about the side windows and the replacement yeah, windows. At the, at the moment, the only thing that we were discussing was the window issue. And the, the windows window. are yeah. certainly I'm familiar with. We lived there for 39 years, and and I've seen that house every day for the last 39 years. And that uh, I read the report and I read what the staff had recommended. And I can understand while there may be windows, for example, that were taken out for one reason or another, that any, and we wouldn't be, wouldn't have any objection nor would the neighborhood have any objection to the idea of replacing with windows that were the same kind and quality that have been in that house. What I think the board is being asked to do is to overrule the Historical Preservation Commission's 
aspect with regard to these double pane windows that are proposed to be installed, to which we would vigorously object because they're not consistent with anything at all in our historical neighborhood. And we would ask the Board of Adjustment to affirm the denial by the Historical Preservation Commission with replacement of the windows with anything other than windows that were like the ones that were in there because while it may be that the Bowmans have been the, the title owners of this property for maybe a year and a half or something like that, Doug Friesen has lived in that house since the day it was bought in 1998 and those windows that were taken out were taken out by him and he's still living there today. So if something's happened to him, someone might ask him. Thank you. Are there questions from the board members at the moment? Comments? Ms. Camilla, do you want to make any additional? Well, again, under the unique circumstances of the owners of this property, they do not have the, those originals. They sim it, it can't happen. And under those unique circumstances, uh, and because, uh, as the staff had stated, it will not affect, adversely affect the character of the neighborhood, uh, we don't know that we really have any other choice other than to ask, and I realize it was done without this, this board's approval or the Historic Preservation Board's. I understand that. My clients didn't have anything to do with that. Uh, my clients bought this property and are asking to try to f correct problems that occurred prior to their purchasing it. Again, they purchased it. I know we've been over this. They purchased it at a sheriff's sale. It was up for sale, and they came and purchased it, and I did that on their behalf. As a result, I don't know anything else to do other than to replace with like, kind, and quality. Under the circumstances presented, uh, we ask this court to overturn the board's decision and allow this property to continue to be uh, kept up uh, made made goods but so that the whole neighborhood will enjoy it. We have done extensive work in the last three months asking what Mr. Allen had proposed and which this, what this board ordered, which was to clean that property up. We've done that. We have completed the, uh, the replacement of the original brickwork on the side. We have gone as far as we can with the uh, uh, sh the uh, shutters that not the shutters, the, uh, the shingles. Uh, replacing those with the originals back there. We have, as far as we can go until we get the roof completed, which we're having difficulty with that because of the enormous hailstorm of, uh, that happened here in Oklahoma City. We're having difficulty getting a contractor to finish the, uh, the roof and the roof line as was proposed by this, uh, as was approved by this board. Uh, but we believe we're going to make it in the six months that you required of us. We're going as far as we can. I don't. I know nothing else other than to say, what can we do? We cannot put original windows back that we simply do not have. Uh, we're asking. I, I, let me interrupt. I think the point is that it's not the original windows. You're putting in thermal pane glass. That's the issue, I believe. Well, um, and to clarify, it's already windows have been in place I mean, for they, a while, and they're not replacing anything. If, if, if I understand correctly, everything, that. all the windows that are original are now are being repaired. That's, repaired, right? But that's the not. Windows there's that not. She's asking to uh, replace are already in. Right. But the, but the argument is it uh, is the like kind argument, you know, and the uh, and the rebuttal is is that they're not. That's my understanding. Right. They're not like kind to what was originally that's in right, there. That's right. Okay. Well, I, so, so that's, you know, I mean, but, but that's your argument. It appears to be your argument that it's like kind. And, um, I mean, I'm sorry they, they got what they got. I mean, they went to sheriff's sale and got what they got. You know, that's a liability of doing that type of thing. But, uh, but still, you know, if there's, not, if there's not proof here that they made a mistake because that, that the uh, Preservation Commission made a mistake somehow, in deciding these windows were appropriate based on the current guidelines, then it sounds to me like we're not even talking about like kind. Right. Well, I, you are you are stating that we have thermal pane windows. I don't know that to be this, the situation, and, and maybe Catherine knows something that I don't know. I know that they are are they are double pane. Du yeah, did wood. mention double glaze. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Which is why which is why the commission 
denied it was the replacement windows are not historically appropriate and they are not, and they are double glazed. Excuse me. It's in our okay. packet. You can. I'll make a motion um, to uphold the, the uh, request by the HPC. Second. It's a motion and a second to uphold the uh, decision of the Historic Preservation Commission. All those in favor, please record your vote. This is just as to windows. As to, just windows. as to item um, uh, it's to the not windows. Correct. Out. Okay. Yes. The with appeal the, is uh, denied. With the uh, request of reconstructing the uh, front porch, the uh, homeowners are asking. Let, let's let's talk about the steps themselves. Uh, they are asking that the steps be replaced instead of with wood, which is what they are now. Uh, first off, there's no question that they need to be replaced. I believe that that, uh, that, that has not been controverted in any way. Um, we are asking that the, they be replaced with the cement that has the appearance of wood uh, for several reasons. First and foremost, uh, because of a safety issue, we can place a, we can heat the steps during the cold weather so that uh, the concrete allows the heat to, uh, to be used to keep them clear of any and all ice because of the dangerous condition that is affected when that does occur. Um, the, there are the five adjacent landowners to this particular piece of property. Uh, out of the five, three of them have, that are actually adjacent, three of them do have concrete steps, and one has both concrete and wood uh, associated with that. Oh, actually, one that is adjoining is half wood, half concrete, and then two of the ones that are adjoining are concrete themselves. It's our understanding that the guidelines state with the specificity that the historic districts are created to guide and not to prevent a change and that the preservation ordinances establish a process that ensures that changes to properties in the historic district are consistent with the spirit and character of the historic district while meeting owners and residents contemporary needs. The need is that the uh, wood simply is not a conductor for the heat. It, it cannot be done. If we are allowed to put the concrete, it would be stamped as wood from a street. Specifically, it will not have the appearance that it is concrete. It will have the appearance of being wood. Uh, we will have the safety issue, the security issue of knowing that, that uh, no one will fall during the ice in the snow in Oklahoma. And we know that it will not really change the appearance of, or the historic nature because we know that the neighborhood itself is going to concrete. Not, I cannot state that this particular house has had concrete in the past. We only know what it had at the time of the recent photographs. But we know that the area itself has 52 percent concrete steps now. Uh, and those adjacent to them themselves have concrete. Adjoining has concrete and some concrete and, and wood. And as a result, we would like the, this board to overturn the denial of that certificate of appropriateness with regards to that. The uh, porch, which is combined with the steps in, itself, we also would like to do that in concrete and uh, concrete with wood stamp because the appearance would not change the neighborhood at all uh, because we can also heat that as well. We believe that the guidelines don't prevent change. They simply want to obtain the integrity of the appearance of the neighborhood. That would be done if this is approved by this board. I, I, guidelines seem pretty, pretty clear in this case that uh, missing or severely deteriorated elements must be replaced in kind. Uh, it seems pretty cut and dry to me. Move to deny the appeal with regard to the front porch alterations. Second. And what are the specific findings? And we'll need to go back on the windows and have some of those too. Because of noncompliance with the historic guidelines regarding material replacement and whatever else. <laughs> <laughs> 
Actually, before you vote on that, I just wanted to offer some clarifications. Um, at the time that the reconstruction of the porch was considered, there were two primary elements to it. One was the floor and one was the ceiling. Um, the denial of the con reconstruction of the porch floor does not meet the standards and guidelines. The replacement of the steps wouldn't meet the standards and guidelines based on the information that we have today. However, the replacement in kind of the porch ceiling, which is largely deteriorated and missing, would be appropriate and consistent with the guidelines. So if it's possible, um, you know, we could uh, have the ceiling replaced in kind, approved, and the floor um, upheld. Is that, go ahead. Is, is the ceiling, the porch ceiling, administratively approvable? No. Because it's in kind? No. Okay. There's nothing that gives us administrative ability, approval authority over replacing things in kind unless they've been specifically called out in the guidelines. And so that is not one of the items. That did we get. the commission specifically deny the poor ceiling? When they made their denial, they denied everything altogether. And that was one of the things that they could have approved. Okay. Okay. So that would be an ex acceptable modification on our end. That would. If your motion is to deny, it should not then, based on what she's saying, you should consider yeah, approving I'll, the ceiling. I'll, I'll modify it to allow the beadboard system or ceiling to be installed on a replaced or rebuild of the porch. For the ceiling. For the ceiling. Ceiling. Replacing kind. Replacing kind, the ceiling is there, is, is part of this motion. Am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Dunn? Yes, right. You, you. you would be approved for the beadboard use you. on the ceiling. Mr. Dell, did you have a statement? If, please please come, uh, come to the microphone just so we can record your testimony. Thank you. I'm not exactly sure I understand what beadboard is because I live in a house, as you know, next door, and I've got wooden steps, wooden porch, and wooden ceiling on my porch. And uh, all of those materials can be replaced just exactly the way they are today. So I'm not exactly sure I understand what the complaint is or why they can't replace it in kind with the same kind. It's basically a narrow car siding. Okay. That, that, I think the motion would, if we allow them to replace in kind, it would force them to replace in kind, is that? Except that they're asking to replace it with beadboard, which apparently is not in kind. Okay. That's the reason why I've raised is that, that. Is that specifically in their application? Catherine, can you speak to <clears throat> what's already there? Um, I've often used the words car siding and B board. They've often been used um, interchangeably. The goal would be that for the material that was originally used on the porch ceiling, which some of it remains there today, but it's largely deteriorated, that that same material would be permitted to be installed. So um, whatever name we give it, the uh, ultimate outcome would be it would match the remnants of what's there now. Okay, I'll modify the motion again. Uh, we will not, we'll, we, the ceiling will be approved for replacement with material that matches what is still remaining there as evidence of what that ceiling was before it deteriorated. And the rest of the porch, the rebuild, needs to be with materials that are in replacement of the original materials, design, and so on. So your motion then is to deny the porch and steps, but to approve the porch ceiling with replacement in kind? That's a good statement of that wow. motion. <laughs> yes, it, it is. Right. clarification <laughs> that, it's, that the reference to beadboard is, 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 is not prevail, it's the in kind. In kind. Okay. And the, Second. the reasons that are as you stated previously, okay. your findings. Yes. yes. There's been a motion and a second. Please record your vote. No. That motion is approved. I think that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's still actually one issue before us, the, the doors. The doors.
the Actually, door and side lights. The, uh, the doors at this time, uh, we are uh, have going to represent, we're going to either replace in kind, uh, just as is, and brief. So you're withdrawing your yes. appeal on the doors? Exactly. Okay. exactly. Oh. And side lights? Yes. Okay. So we okay. still need a finding, though, on the windows. That's correct. Okay. And who made that motion? We need findings on the basis for your motion to deny on the windows. I, I suppose it's going to be the same as, as his findings. Okay, but that you agree that going to work? with the commission's statement, as indicated in the report, that the replacement windows are not historically appropriate and they're double glazed. That's right. Therefore, I do, yeah, don't conform. Okay. Okay. Motion is amended then. That's it. So you amend your motion to that effect, and the second, you agree with that motion still? Do we need to revote? We should, just okay. a, a clarification. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I was unable to hear, Ms. Talley, the, the statements that you made that have now been part of the motion. Do you mind repeating them so I can hear a little bit better? Um, which, On the, with this regards last to one the, about the windows. the windows, yes. The staff report says, that the replacement windows are not historically appropriate and they are double glazed. And Mr. Allen agreed that that was the specific finding, that as well as the rest of the information in the staff report from the Historic Preservation Commission. I believe that that is as to, and if I'm wrong, please correct me, that that is as to the north elevation first floor Windows. Am I incorrect about that? It doesn't they were all say that. It just says windows. Yeah, the, the appeal is for just windows. Is all that it says in the staff report, and the other information has been stricken through, and that's what's remaining: the replacement windows, that paragraph, and then the rest in paragraph 17 about it not being in compliance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. So move. Second. We're adjourned. Oh. Roll out, Kate. Oops.